Excellent. I um, welcome you uh, to our third uh, um, uh, in the series of lectures that are part of uh, the Visiting Artist Studio course at the Fine Art Department at UMPRUM. I'm very happy uh, to introduce uh, uh, our today's uh, guest lecturer, Oksana Timofeva. I'm going to introduce her uh, briefly uh, before I uh, give the floor over to her. So um, Oksana Timofeva is uh, a doctor of science, uh, a professor at Stasi's uh, Center for Philosophy at the European University at St. Petersburg in Russian Federation, uh, and a member of the artistic collective uh, Stodelat, uh, and the deputy editor of the journal Stasis. Uh, among uh, her uh, impressive, very impressive body of work uh, uh, and many writings, I definitely should mention a few books, uh, uh, such as How to Love a Homeland, Introduction to the Erotic Philosophy of Georges Bataille, and The History of Animals, A Philosophy. The letter was translated into uh, Russian, Turkish, Slovenian, Persian, and has a foreword by Slavoj Žižek. Uh, for me, the book was um, uh, really total uh, inspiration, uh, and uh, it opened the door um, into the um, imagining and reimagining of uh, uh, how to address uh, uh, the animals, the animal uh, subjectivity uh, in a totally different way in my um, artistic projects. Um, but it was also through this book that uh, I got uh, to meet uh, Oksana the second time uh, in my life uh, in Ljubljana uh, when uh, the Slovenian translation and the uh, release of the book was uh, publicly uh, presented uh, uh, by her. And it was at the end uh, of February, um, actually a little bit less than two weeks when the so-called Corona era started. Uh, and uh, um, this uh, era um, then started and, and continued to uh, reveal uh, this many social and personal uh, paradoxes. And I was thinking actually uh, uh, in connection with this uh, history uh, of animals that actually this Corona era made people aware as maybe never before that uh, this is what I wrote down, that life is above all about many of those other than human entities. Uh, but uh, yeah, and it also at the same time, it looks that uh, uh, humans have been having much harder um, time uh, uh, and struggles with uh, understanding uh, the coordinates uh, of this new actuality than animals or than, uh, for example, viruses. Uh, so this gloomy pandemic atmosphere evoked a new perspective on reality for all of us on a collective level. And uh, today uh, I invited uh, Timofeva Oksana to discuss some parts of this situation and situations in addressing a problem of self-isolation in times of COVID-19 by drawing parallels with Foucault's archaeology of power and Freud's psychoanalysis. Oksana, the floor is yours. Thank you, Maya. Uh, I remember this, uh, these days very well. When every, it was in February, at the end of February 2020, and uh, everyone was hesitated, should we kiss or not? What should we do? How should we be? Everybody was ill uh, with the flu, but we, we all thought it's already, we have a plaque. <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah, something, uh, something like this. So I, I begin. Uh, in spring uh, 2020, when the World Health uh, Organization uh, officially announced uh, uh, the beginning of the pandemic, uh, and the, the governments of national states be began to introduce uh, various restrictive 
can I just, I'm, I'm totally sorry, but just one thing, uh, before we were talking with um, Oksana, that um, she's actually going to be um, talking, not showing any visual materials. So uh, she said that she would really very much like uh, to see all of us, uh, our faces. Uh, so, because usually, you know, we uh, shut the camera down because it's usually a lot of videos and everything. So, but today is not so. Please, everybody, uh, show yourselves. Sorry, Oksana. Okay, this is it now. Yeah, I mean, it's not obligatory. It's just to have a nice uh, atmosphere or uh, you know, as if we were in a, in a real uh, living room together. Uh, so, and uh, uh, well, in spring. 2020 and later uh, when uh, the governments of national states uh, started to introduce uh, various restrictive policy, policies, uh, some philosophers uh, decided to reread to re uh, Michel Foucault, uh, who created tools for analyzing uh, mass disease in the framework of the genealogy of discourses uh, and strategies of power. Uh, exploring uh, the places of intersection between uh, the power and the bodies, prisons, um, hospitals, schools, etc. Foucault writes um, a political history of illness uh, or um, um, and he points to uh, uh, to the continuity between the diverse uh, discursive uh, practices that historically shape our experience of infection, uh, pathology, mental illness, uh, or sexual perversion. Uh, thus, uh, in uh, one of his lectures uh, called Security Territory Population, Foucault speaks uh, of the three regimes uh, of power with regards to epidemic. Uh, the regime of sovereignty, as he calls it, is based on the exclusion, uh, as in the case of leprosy in the medieval era. Um, the, uh, the, the disciplinary power introduces quarantine restrictions, uh, as in the case of the plague. Uh, finally, uh, more recent political uh, politics of security introduces new practices such as uh, vaccination, and, uh, and prophylactics, uh, hygiene, et cetera, which have been used uh, since, uh, since uh, 19th century to control uh, the epidemic of the uh, smallpox. Foucault uh, arranges these regimes in a chronological order, uh, but emphasizes that they do not so much replace each other uh, as evolve one into another so that each subsequent regime uh, retains in itself the elements of the previous one. Uh, like, uh, like the disciplinary power, uh, the, uh, uh, the modernity, the regime of the beginning of modernity uh, keeps uh, some elements, some basic elements of the exclusion uh, in, inherent for uh, characteristic for the regime of sovereignty, uh, etc. Um, in his earlier works, uh, such as History of Madness or uh, Discipline and Punish, Foucault elaborates um, on the difference between the first uh, two regimes, uh, sovereign exclusion, uh, and uh, disciplinary control uh, and on the transition from one to another. Uh, I will focus on this distinction as the elements of both persist uh, through the modern uh, regimes of security, also in the practices of COVID-19 regulations. In the first part of his history of madness, uh, Michel Foucault mentioned, mentions multiple uh, leprosaria across Europe that, uh, that became empty by the end, they, that they, were, they were full, but they became empty at the end of the Middle Ages as the leprosy uh, regressed. But soon these places of the damned uh, were filled again with the new outsiders, such as 
the poor, the, the vagabonds, uh, the criminals, and the madmen. Um, the principal mechanism uh, is the exclusion through which a certain community is getting rid uh, of the troublesome elements. Um, of its trouble, some elements. Discipline is another type of uh, management. Uh, when uh, so, so uh, leprosy, uh, leprosaria. We built a leprosaria out of the city, and we expel all uh, these elements that are mm, uh, contagious or whatever they have leprosy. Uh, so we we expel it out of the city. Uh, this is uh, the regime of sovereignty, uh, and uh, discipline is another type uh, uh, of management when nobody is excluded or expelled, uh, but the society is carefully segmented and reorganized from within uh, so that all its members and parts are under control. Um, they are observed in the discipline and punish, referring to the French um, archives of the 17th, uh, 17th century, uh, Foucault depicts the plague city as the segmented, fixed, and frozen space where uh, every individual is, uh, is locked and observed. Uh, and there is a quote, uh, a long quote from Foucault. First, a strict spatial partitioning, the closing of the town, um, of the town and its outlying districts, a prohibition to leave the town on pain of death, the killing of all stray animals, the division of the town into distinct quarters, each government by an um, intendant. Each street is placed under the authority of a syndic who keeps it under surveillance. As he leaves the street, yeah, he will be uh, condemned to death. On the appointed day, everyone is ordered to stay indoors. Um, it is forbidden to leave on pain of death. Every day, too, the syndic goes into the street uh, for which he is responsible, stops before each house, uh, gets all the inhabitants to appear at the windows, like, like we are at the windows. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, he calls each of them by name, uh, informs his, uh, himself as to the state of each and every one of them. You understand why, right? Uh, the plague. Uh, and we have a family, see if all members are here. So, which means uh, nobody is ill. Uh, there is no danger, well, uh, well observed. Uh, the strict, so they, uh, it, uh, the, the end of quote. The strict segmented of, of the plague city is opposed to Leprosaria, uh, where uh, all in, um, where uh, an individual was, as, he, as Foucault puts it, uh, left to his doom in a mass among which it was useless to differentiate. It was, un uh, un uh, uh, it was a confusion, a total confusion of bodies, uh, leprosaria, so the, the, the opposite principle. Ac according to Foucault, uh, the exile of the leper and the arrest of the plague the, do not bring with them the same political dream. The first is, is that of a pure community where all bodies are, dangerous bodies are expelled. And the second is of a disciplined society when all bodies are inside, but well, well observed and controlled. Okay, uh, however, these two models are not uh, incompatible. Further developments of power mechanism reveals uh, new modes of the convergences. Thus, according to Foucault, in the 19th century, disciplinary um, techniques began to apply to the spaces of exclusion of which the leper was the symbolic inhabitant, whereas beggars, vagabonds, madmen, and the disorderly formed the real pop population. You know what I mean? Uh, basically, former leprosaria become prisons. They are uh, now filled with uh, with those who do not work, as Foucault puts it, with beggars, with uh, madmen, uh, and uh, and slightly the same mechanism, uh, the, the new mechanisms emerge there. 
So uh, they are not, these people are not uh, an undifferentiated mass, but they are now well observed and controlled. Um, so Leprosaria transformed into psychiatric hospitals and prisons. Uh, the, the disciplinary power permits disorderly spaces of exclusion in order, in order to carefully register and, um, and individualize its inhabitants uh, that still remain uh, stigmatized as excluded. Uh, so we control them. They are now inside the, these dangerous elements. Uh, and uh, in Foucault's perspective, modern society does not need such external disciplinary mechanisms uh, as uh, it already internalized them and developed uh, sophisticated practices of self-control and self-discipline. Uh, we discipline ourselves. Uh, the term then isolation. The, my, my main uh, point is about isolation. Uh, which uh, Foucault sometimes uh, uses as a synonym to the exclusion of the leper that uh, deserves a special attention. Uh, and um, uh, in fact, both uh, these chaotic spaces of exclusion and segmented disciplinary spaces are forms of isolation. Uh, the leper is isolated in a, uh, in a leprous area um, where uh, the authorities never show their faces. Uh, and uh, the resident of a plague city is isolated in his house, uh, where the power constantly checks whether everything in its place, uh, and the prisoner is, also, is as isolated in his room, in his uh, chamber, uh, where he is constantly observed by a policeman. Um, in all cases, isolation persists as a matrix element of the interaction of the disease and the power. Um, Foucault uh, didn't have a chance to see the, uh, the digitalized strategies of uh, management of the COVID-19, uh, but one can see that, uh, that the actual regime of administration retains and synthesizes the previous forms that he described. Uh, today, the most obvious um, disciplinary mechanisms such as quarantine regulations, lockdowns, and border closures are combined with the procedures of um, exclusion on the one hand and security practices on the other. Uh, on the, other. Uh, the strategy of uh, security stakes on the mass vaccination, uh, face masks, uh, hand washing, uh, and um, and what is important, uh, what enters into the picture is not simply isolation, but self-isolation. Uh, while in the plague city, the syndic himself come to, uh, comes to lock the door of each house from the outside, he takes the key with him and hands it over to the uh, intendant of the quarter. The, um, we uh, and um, the intendant keeps it until the end of the quarantine. We are encouraged to voluntarily lock ourselves in our apartments uh, and observe social distances. Uh, we lock ours. No, nobody locks us from the outside, but we we do we do that ourselves. Uh, and um, these COVID practices have an explicit sanitary and hygienic aspect. People do not only lock themselves in their houses, keeping in contact with the outside world through delivery services, but try to protect their faces um, and bodies from potential external dangers using medical masks, disposable gloves, and antiseptics. The focus is not so much on the control of power over the bodies, but on uh, self-protective technologies um, uh, deliberately applied by individuals uh, themselves, and above all, on the routine, uh, routine um, uh, uh, construction of the system of barriers, um, physical barriers intended to prevent the spread of the virus. Uh, what, what do I mean? 
uh, individual responsibility becomes uh, the subject of moral reflections and uh, discussion, making consumer choices extremely uh, difficult since the virus is invisible um, uh, and the contact cannot be clearly identified. A person is formed uh, to um, uh, is forced to make a variety of uh, situational decisions, whether it is worth wearing a mask in a given situation, uh, whether it is necessary to meet the courier uh, in a protective the, the courier uh, in uh, protective glove, uh, gloves, how to disinfect purchases uh, and avoid infection when pressing the dispenser of a bottle with the disinfectant, uh, with the sanit sanitizer, uh, something of this kind. The more careful are the strategies of self-isolation, the more likely the understanding that the chain of barriers cannot be absolutely solid and uninterrupted. And in the vital contact uh, with the outside world, it will necessarily break somewhere. Uh, that's, uh, that's the point. In this context, uh, obsessive compulsive disorder presents uh, a paradigmatic case. Let me quote uh, the description uh, of the hygienic routine of a person who suffers from misophobia uh, in the situation of the pandemic. Uh, I quote, now when I bring my groceries home from the shop, I send them, I set them, uh, them all down in a little used corner of my flat. The same uh, way I might carefully set aside a pair of shoes after stepping on a discarded plaster or, or a wad of a uh, shaving gum. I wash my hands. Anything that can be shaken free from its protective packaging, I set, I set aside. Uh, confident, uh, confident it's clean enough already. Then methodically, I clean the remaining items uh, with household disinfectant or washing up liquid and water, uh, placing the finished ones down in a new pile. I wash my hands again and put my purchases uh, in the cupboard or fridge, end of quote. A daily routine um, of consumption. Uh, misophobia, uh, also known as verminophobia, ger germophobia, ger uh, germa germophobia, bacillophobia, and bacteriophobia is a pathological fear of contamination and germs. Uh, the term was coined by William Hammond in, in, in 1879 when describing a case of obsessive compulsive disorder, OSD, exhibited in repeatedly washing one, one's hands. Um, among the symptoms there are listed excessive hand washing, a fear of physical contact, especially with strangers, uh, excessive effort dedicated to cleaning and sanitizing one's environment, uh, a refusal to share personal items, etc. Obsessive compulsive disorder is characterized by obsessive thoughts like the fear of infection and compulsive rituals. Uh, Sigmund Freud uh, described in um, it in uh, 1909 in his famous essay, Notes Upon a Case of Obsessional Neurosis. Um, it is one uh, of the most famous of uh, uh, Freudian practice. Uh, this, this story is also known as the... Uh, just, uh, uh, excuse me. All, all my computers. Uh, the, but when, when I, when I give talks, everybody is always is always worried about me a lot. Okay. Um, and, um, uh, the, the story uh, is also known as a rat man case. Uh, an educated young man, and this is actually one of uh, the three cases. 
let's say uh, a beastie boy, Freud's beastie boy cases, something about boys and animals, uh, the red man, the wolf man, and the little hounds. Um, an educated young man who just returned from the military service complains about his obsessive fears and impulses. Freud's analysis of the case presents a fascinating uh, narrative, um, a kind of detective investigation unraveling the tangle of complex uh, psychic connections and symptoms uh, and revealing more and more curious details. Thus, the patient is afraid that some of his actions or thoughts would result in the death of his father. Uh, but in fact, the, uh, the father died, uh, died uh, several years ago. Uh, Freud inquires into the scheme of the patient uh, relations with his father and finds its explanation in, in his infantile sexuality, as, Fre as Freud always does, actually. Uh, uh, and, um, and it goes deeper and deeper uh, uh, into deeper, deeper layers of, of a patient uh, psychic life, from adult symptoms to the episodes of adolescence and his childhood, and refers to the scene of which the patient had been told by his mother. He doesn't remember himself, but he had been told. Uh, um, when it was, uh, it was a small, he was small, small child. Um, he had done something na nafty for which his father had given him a beating. The little boy had flown into a terrible rage and had hurled a, a abuse at his father, even while he was under his blouse. But as he knew no bad language, he had called him uh, all the names of common objects that he could think of and had screamed, you lamp, you towel, you plate, and so on. So he was so little, three years old. He didn't know bad words. Uh, he, he used the words he knew. Yeah, you plate, your towel. Importantly, according to his mother's uh, re recollections, he was punished by his father because he had beaten someone uh, with his teeth, uh, uh, beaten. After this episode, uh, as patient himself notes, his character changed uh, and, uh, and he became a covert, as he himself says. He is scared of everything. Um, father analysis brings Freud to the conclusion that behind the patient's love for his father, there is a, a hatred, uh, the fear of the father, uh, the fear that the father will die reveals the truth of his desire. Uh, he wishes death to his father, who is already dead, by the way. And the crucial point uh, here is an obsessive fantasy about the punishment meted out to criminals in the Orient. This is a quote. A pot is turned upside down on the buttocks of the criminal and rats in the pot then bore uh, rats in the pot then bore their way into the, his anus. Um, this fantasy opens an associative flaw in which the most important role, uh, role is played by rats. Uh, their images create connections between different parts of the patient personality, between his present and his past uh, hatred and love. Uh, the red symbolism is multiple. In the patient's mind, they are associated, among other things, with money, his father's debt, uh, dirty, dirty cash, uh, with the penis, anal eroticism, uh, with dangerous uh, infection, infections, uh, like fear of contracting syphilis, but also, uh, but also with children, children, little reds. Uh, I would like to pay attention to this last associate, associate, association, uh, Red's children. My hypothesis uh, is that Freud comes close to the most profound truth, uh, but does not really touch upon it, um, shifting the focus of his research into, uh, into infantile uh, sexuality and family drama. Uh, there is a kind of 
trapdoor within the analysis of the red man, uh, something like a rabbit hole uh, from Lewis Carroll's uh, Alice in Wonderland, into which one can eventually fall, uh, the red hole, as they call it, the red hole. Uh, it is the faint of time where the present and the past coincide. The father may still be alive and the boy can still prevent his death, uh, which he fear fearfully desired, as he can prevent his own, his own mental isolation uh, and uh, mental alienation. It is also the grave of time where some hidden possibilities are buried. Uh, the entrance to the red hole of Freud's, uh, of Freud's analysis can be found by the following episode, I quote. Once when the patient was visiting his father's grave, he had, been, uh, he had seen a big beast, which he had uh, taken to be a rat uh, gliding along over the grave. He assumed uh, that it had actually come out of his father's grave and had just been having a meal of his corpse. Uh, the notion of a rat is inseparably bound up with the fact that it has sharp teeth with which it gnaws and bites. Uh, but rats cannot be sharp-toothed, greedy and dirty with impurity, uh, with, the, uh, with the impunity. They are carefully persecuted and mercilessly put to death by men as the patient had often observed with horror. Uh, he had often pitied the poor creatures, but he himself had been just such a nasty, dirty little wretch who has apt to bite people when he was in a rage and had been fearfully punished for doing so. He could truly be said to find a living likeness to himself in the red. So identification. Uh, he sees the rat, yes, the rat, probably she was in the grave, she bite the father, but no, the boy realizes that uh, what he actually saw was, uh, was that the, the rats themselves were exterminated by, by men, by people. Um, Freud evokes uh, this recollection in order to link it uh, through the infantile sexuality uh, to the initial fantasy about the oriental punishment, as if the red boy would thus find satisfaction of his unconscious desire to torture his, fa his father. I would like, however, to shift the focus of the analysis and point to the contrast between the phantasmatic torture uh, with rats and the real torture of rats, the scenes of merciless persecution of these creatures uh, that the patient himself used to observe with horror. Uh, the rat from the father's grave, in fact, as Freud notes, uh, it was not a rat, but a weasel, is one of those who sink, uh, who sink their teeth into his father but also who, has, uh, who was tormented and exterminated by the people with the cruelty compar um, comparable to the one exerted by his father, uh, punishing him or uh, uh, for, for biting someone. Uh, the child and the animal are captured within the closed circle of violence uh, without being able to respond to it. Uh, or only able to cry, you lamp, you towel, uh, you plate. This is the first red circle. Uh, the, the second red circle, yeah, so the, the circle of violence uh, and the identification. Uh, the, the second red circle is a deeper one. The, um, the father with whom the boy identifies himself is also a rat. Um, Apparently, this rat, which comes out of the grave, is the ghost of the father, the specter. Uh, the rat uh, sutures the present and the past inside the grave, which is at the same time a red hole. His father is alive and still loved. This deeper circle is the one of love, where the living and the dead, the human being and the animal, the son and the father, 
are in the state of amalgamation. The red children have to pass through the circle of violence and torture in order to become a source of infection, dirty money, dirty penises, and guilt, uh, which one will be obsessively trying to wash off his hands uh, as microbes. I know it's difficult to grasp, uh, but uh, yeah, I, uh, I'm trying to uh, repeat it. Uh, you, you, will, um, you will get to it. Um, yeah, the, uh, the red man case is one of these three cases in which Freud shifts the focus of his analysis of unconscious material uh, from animality to infantile sexuality and the Oedipus complex. Uh, the other two are the case of little Hans who was afraid of horses and the Wolfman case. In all three cases, a real or imagined encounter of a child with animality causes mental illness. Psychosis in the Wolfman case, obsessional neurosis um, in the Redman case, and phobia in the case of little Hans. It seems that Freud does pay much attention to this moment of, does not pay much attention to this moment of Red's uh, suffering which creates the condition for solidarity experienced by the child at the beginning of the story. In this solidarity uh, with these animals, um, in this solidarity or love, which in father developments, including sexual ones, um, turns into neurosis, psychosis, or phobia. What if sexuality only shields this traumatic initial encounter with the animality through violence and repression uh, and covers the rat hole uh, of the truth of our psychic life, just covers it, the shield of sexuality. So this sexuality doesn't, is not the truth of, uh, uh, of uh, his mental illness, but something that prevents us to see the truth, which is an encounter with, with violence uh, projected uh, onto, um, multiply projected. Like you see uh, the animals are beaten. Um, uh, uh, so the, the animals are exterminated. Uh, and, uh, and this horror then makes a transformation in your uh, psyche so that it transforms into, after all, it transforms into mental illness and you wash and wash and wash your hands because you, uh, you have something, you have guilt. I will, uh, yeah, I, uh, I will keep on explaining it further. Um, in, his, um, in this essay, Freud uh, makes a distinction between the two mechanisms of repression, psychic repression in a psychoanalytic term, uh, which mediate the process of the transformation of a psychic trauma into mental illness, amnesia for hysteria and isolation for the obsessional neurosis. I quote, in hysteria, it is the rule that the Precipitating causes of the illness are overtaken by amnesia, no less than the infantile experiences by whose help uh, the precipitated causes are able to transform the affective energy into symptoms. Now, in this amnesia, we, we see the evidence of the repression which has taken place. So in uh, hysterical, I am a hysterical. I was raped when I was a little uh, girl. Then I uh, repressed it and I completely forgot it. I erased it from my memory. This is uh, like amnesia. This is how repression functions. But something, uh, then I, I forgot it, but my body remembers. And then I have something like I cough or uh, I have a pain in my uh, hands or something, something, I, I don't know, uh, a symptom is uh, um, a 
symptom reveals that something is, is wrong with me, a trauma. Um, in this amnesia, uh, yeah, uh, the case is different in obsessional neurosis, a different mechanism. The infantile preconditions of the neurosis may be overtaken by amnesia through, uh, this is often an incomplete one, but the immediate occasions of the illness are, on the contrary, retained in the memory. Repression makes use of another, and in reality, a simpler, a simpler mechanism. The trauma, instead of being forgotten, is deprived of its affective cataxis. So that what remains is consciousness. Uh, in consciousness is nothing but its ideat, uh, ideational content, which is perfectly colorless and is judged to be unimportant. So I actually, obsessional neurosis. I do remember everything. Uh, yes, something happened. Uh, and yes, I, I remember about it, but I don't care. Uh, so uh, I, Mm. Uh, I have uh, uh, emotionally isolated this uh, this episode uh, so that it's colorless, it's neutral. So something happened, but it, it's not something important. Uh, yeah, I, I don't even think we we should mention it during my psychoanalytic treatment. Something like this. Um, I think that uh, there is a certain structure of homology between the two types of repression, according to Freud, and the two strategies of power, which I mentioned before, according to Foucault. In a sense, the exclusion of lepers, uh, lepersaria, <laughs> correlates to the amnesia of hysterics. A traumatic event is expelled out of our hysterical consciousness. So. This uh, like memory of my, I don't know, trauma, rape, seduction, whatever. Uh, I just expel it, I ban it uh, uh, and uh, I forget it, erase from my memory. Uh, this is leprous area of my uh, psyche, uh, hysteria. Uh, and um, um, and uh, the forgotten dissolves in an undifferentiated mass and finds its refuge in this leprous area of the soul. Isolation uh, in the psychoanalytic sense, uh, this the second uh, one, um, is closer to the disciplinary, uh, disciplinary model of a plague city. The cause of illness, the trauma, is isolated within consciousness, locked up uh, and uh, and neutralized or kind of emotionally disinfected. We kind of see it in, in, in like in a window of our memory, but it's like uh, disinfected. Uh, it is, there are no connections. It is not connection to, uh, connected to anything. Isolated, isolated memory. Uh, that's why Freud calls it isolation. Uh, and uh, and uh, the so the patient remember his uh, remembers his traumatic event, but all its connections to the present symptoms are blocked. Uh, not that uh, unlike the source of leprosy or plague, the source of mental illness is localized not in the space, but in time. Uh, in in the past, for example, in our childhood. Mm -hmm. Thus, the consciousness of the one who suffers from hysteria or obsessional neurosis, uh, neurosis uh, operates in time in a similar way as the power in the situations of epidemics operates in space. Basically, it has isolates uh, dangerous elements, uh, represses and isolates. Uh, isolation is one of the main mechanisms of obsessional compulsive, obsessive compulsive disorder. As Freud notes in his later work, Inhibition Symptoms and Anxiety, uh, the fear of infection characterizes, uh, characteristic of this neurosis relates to the archaic taboo on touching. touching. Uh, the touch is ambivalent. It can be a loving touch, um, 
uh, erotic or gentle, but also aggressive and destructive. Uh, what, what Freud writes, Eros desires uh, contact because it strives to make the ego and the loved object one, to abolish all spatial barriers between them. But destructiveness too, which before the invention of long range weapons could only take effect at close quarters, must presuppose, uh, presuppose physical contact, a coming to grips. Isolation is a psychic uh, mechanism, uh, as a psychic mechanism is, according to Freud, removing the possibility of contact. Uh, it is a method of withdrawing a thing from being, uh, from withdrawing a thing from being touched in any way. And when a neurotic isolates, uh, isolates an impression or an, an activity by interpolating an interval, he is letting to be understood symbolically that he will not allow his thoughts about that impression uh, or activity to come into associative contact with other th thoughts. So the thoughts are separated uh, in the case of obsessional neurotic. An obsessional neurotic tries uh, to defend himself, placing touching at the center of his prohibitive system, uh, which implies a set of excessive, uh, excessive protective rituals. A similar operation is performed by the mental apparatus, isolating a traumatic impression or activity from associate, associations uh, and thus forbidding his thoughts to touch each other. Uh, that's why they, they fall apart. Uh, you lamp, you towel, you plate is a magic spell to protect himself from the, the violence of his father whom he loves, the boy uh, from his bad touch, the boy draws a kind of a sacred red uh, circle around him. Uh, perhaps uh, we have been beaten once uh, or maybe just saw others being beaten mercilessly like, like rats. And since then we keep washing our hands. The conclusion could be drawn that self-isolation practiced by people in the era of uh, COVID-19 turns obsessive compulsive disorder from an individual symptom uh, to, uh, into a collective one. Uh, an obsessive compulsive disorder, one of the manifestations of which is the fear of infection, presents itself as contagio uh, contagious not in the physical, but in a social sense. Uh, this conclusion, however, is a bit uh, superficial. Uh, superficial, it's a bit, uh, how to say, cheesy. Um, it will be more accurate to say that the functioning of COVID-19 in space corresponds to the psychic reality formed by the temporal structure of the obsessive, obsessive compulsive disorder. Uh, yes, I see that you, uh, okay. <laughs> um, in space, what, what COVID-19 does in space? Uh, restrictions. Uh, closed first, the borders were closed. Then we close ourselves in our apartments. Uh, then we close our, uh, hence, from uh, from a possible touch with the uh, with the sanitizer, so we uh, we do a lot of uh, isolate self uh, self uh, isolation and self isolation. Uh, in case of uh, mental mm, disorder, we do the same, but not in the space, but in time. We isolate a certain recollection. We do not erase it. Uh, we uh, uh, we just um, do this procedure of mental steriliza steril steril sterilization of the past. Um, we deprive associations of their contact. Uh, and uh, what then happens? Um, 
Um, yeah, probably uh, uh, this means that probably COVID-19 has its own kind of red holes, which our society is a hybrid or disciplinary power and collective uh, mental illness is trying to block uh, uh, with the help of protective masks and uh, sanitizers. One second. And sanitizers. Uh, in uh, if recent uh, psychotherapeutic uh, therapeutic, uh, treatment uh, for obsess obsessive compulsive disorder is mainly aimed at correcting the symptoms of this disease. Uh, uh, yeah, you take pills and you feel better. Uh, the task of Freud's psychoanalysis was to find uh, its cause. Uh, Freud's archaeological method is aimed at releasing block, uh, blocked associations, and this is where rats come to his rescue. Uh, Freud's rat is a medium. Uh, she bites uh, through the walls within which the boy tried to hide uh, his desire, uh, breaks through the cordon, uh, uh, cordon sanitaire uh, of his displaced affections. A red hole is a breaking, a crack, uh, a crack in uh, in a disciplinary blockade. Red, reds uh, mediate. In conclusion, reds mediate between the two machines: the machine of epidemic, described by uh, Foucault, uh, and the machine of mental illness, described by Freud. Uh, interrupting the state of isolation, they open the contact between the world of the healthy and the world of the sick. For example, spreading the, the plague on the one hand and between the symptom and the cause of neurosis on the other. In the traditional cultural framework, rats are, uh, are uh, dirty animals uh, that bring disease and death. Uh, and their destruction is a necessary uh, extermination, is a necessary measure of uh, sanitary uh, regulation. This narrative, however, uh, can be interrupted at some point and the holes open through which uh, the viruses of free associations uh, spread, creating collective bodies of conta uh, contagion, mixing sympathy or solidarity uh, in the isolation of a collective uh, obsessive compulsive disorder. Our emotions ha had been disinfected. Looking at rats, we have to mind the infection and keep uh, washing our hands. Uh, this is more or less the conclusion. And uh, now, if you uh, have, uh, if we have time, and if you have questions, uh, we can uh, discuss it further, or I can explain uh, certain things by by using different references, uh, and so on. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Time for yes. questions. Sorry, Maya. Uh, sorry, yeah. Uh, well, I just, uh, I mean, this is maybe going to be a little bit uh, of a joke. It's actually just an association, but maybe to break the ice. I was now just thinking, you know, um, uh, when you were um, concluding with um, this thought that the rats are um, that they are kind of I was I was getting this uh, visual of the rats going uh, between the the machine, you know, from the holes uh, between the machine and between the the the, the two concepts, uh, the total. Um, the total disease between the two total um, uh, uh, 
well, um, I forgot the word, but between being totally sick and being over uh, uh, protected. But then I thought, uh, yeah, maybe the rats are the ones who are going to um, save us, you know, from the first or from uh, the other um, uh, total. I cannot. Uh, find the word uh, it's when it's uh, far very far on one side and very far on the other side how is it called polarized uh, polarity extreme. maybe extremes maybe extreme thank you yes Please. maybe thank you very much so yeah the rats are actually you know going uh, the, uh, between uh, the, all the time uh, between these extremes, but maybe the rats are the ones that are also going to save us, um, you know, uh, from these two extremes where we have now totally uh, are stuck because it's actually, no, but this is not going to be just an association, but uh, because it's actually the rats on which for uh, decades, um, the vaccinations uh, which we are getting now. Ah, yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. But, uh, yeah, maybe. I know that it, does, it is a totally literal connection, but uh, this is what I was thinking about, maybe. Yeah, and I think there's more to rats, like maybe the fear, I don't know if that is part of the archetype, but the fear also comes from the rat being a survivor, you know, they are very like um, animals that always cope and that always find a way and they can multiply and, uh, you know, like have babies in like extreme uh, conditions and they're also said to be very intelligent. So maybe that adds to the fear of having this, um, uh, uh, this like um, interlocutor or a counterpart that always finds a way, you know, like, I think that's maybe part uh, of the, the story. I, I, I think it's like in the phobias, this is always a, a strong factor that they are small enough to enter the holes and find the ways right, even right. if they're locked up or something. Yes, yes, absolutely. I can tell you how I came to this, um, to this um, uh, topic, uh, to rats. Uh, 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 there was a friend of mine who was doing a paper uh, and he was talking about something, I don't know, but uh, he, he used an example from uh, Werner Herzog's uh, movie, mm -hmm. uh, Nosferatu. You remember that, uh, that film, Nosferatu Herzog's? Uh, and um, it was uh, shot in, uh, in uh, the Netherlands, although... Uh, according to, uh, uh, although uh, it should be kind of, it's a kind of, uh, according to the scenario, it is, uh, it is uh, Germany. And uh, uh, the, the plot is like this, um, briefly. A ship comes from Transylvania, uh, Romania, uh, to uh, the, uh, to, to there, to Germany, Netherlands, to Europe, uh, Northern Europe, uh, from from Balkans to Northern Europe, uh, and uh, there is a there are um, uh, there are uh, Nosferatu as a red uh, is on board, uh, and then uh, when the ship arrives, the team is dead or the team uh, disappeared, nobody uh, is alive, but uh, the ship is full of uh, rats and all rats enter the city. A crowd, uh, a huge amount of, uh, of rats uh, enters the city uh, and uh, then uh, the plague begins. They bring the plague. Uh, and actually, there was a, uh, and there are a lot of uh, a lot of shots with rats, with uh, like multiplicity of rats. Uh, but there is a story behind it. That actually, Herzog uh, 
wanted to have uh, plenty of reds and they, and they bought uh, reds in a, in a kind of rescue. Uh, um, a great number of reds, but those were uh, like white laboratory reds uh, and uh, in reality. And the transport, uh, transportation was so difficult that actually half of rats died on the way. Uh, and as they were uh, white and Herzog wanted to have them gray, they actually boiled them, uh, in, uh, almost boiled, they, they put them in, uh, in a kind of boiling water uh, in order to color them. Uh, and uh, also uh, they started to, uh, to get sick, uh, and uh, some part of, uh, of, of those reds died. They were in terrible conditions, terrible. And actually when they come out of this, uh, of this um, uh, ship, uh, they, they are uh, confused. They are kind of like scared. And you can see that if you know the story, uh, just, yeah, just download this movie. And you see, they kind of climb uh, onto each other and they look kind of weird, those reds. So, uh, so the official narrative is they, they are like dirty, they bring the plague, but they look onto the camera like, uh, and they are, uh, if you know the story, they are just suffering there. The, the, the narrative is one, the power narrative, and the reality is totally different. Uh, and, um, and this is a red hole. So when you see as if the red was saying you, hi, hey, please. Uh, yeah, I'm not a terrorist. I'm not a plague bringer. Not, uh, it's like, uh, it's a cry. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and uh, I, was, uh, I was really impressed. I, I, uh, watched this movie once again, and uh, then I uh, I wrote this uh, article also because uh, I was kind of astonished by uh, uh, by this hygiene uh, prescriptions everywhere. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. I was thinking something is is hidden. Something is behind these obsessive uh, rituals. Uh, something uh, deeper, uh, a certain kind of violence, uh, which, uh, which uh, perhaps, um, which perhaps is really well described by this mentioning uh, of uh, like laboratory uh, rats that we used for uh, vaccination, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Uh, and all those and the mink, for example, you know this this story. Uh, how like millions of mink uh, were mm, exterminated in uh, in uh, um, uh, tell me this Norway country. Norway yes yeah, yeah. things uh, when uh, uh, when diseases come and we always blame certain anim animals remember like the the flu, there was a swine flu, there was a bird flu, all kinds of animals were blamed for- uh, The crazy like, cow disease. Uh, hmm? The crazy cow disease. Yes, yes, also, yeah, the crazy cow uh, and uh, um, yeah, etc. cetera. Um, whereas actually, it's we who destroyed the animal's habitat. And then that's how we got the virus, uh, um, which is also an unhuman entity, um, but a smaller one. There is a fantastic uh, storm there. Oh, yeah, we saw the life, uh, light effects. Uh, <laughs> really yes, <cool>. yes. <laughs> well, to me, it was also interesting when you were talking about the, when you were mentioning the separated thoughts, not just separated bodies, but actually also thoughts. Could you maybe um, 
uh, tell something more about this uh, concept? I don't know, to me, it's really an interesting concept. Um, what could, uh, where could, I mean, where could this bring us, you know, after the rats um, save us and we get all uh, vaccinated, you know, after a year? <laughs> what do you think? I mean, I know that uh, it's not how it works, so that you would be, um, you know, foretelling uh, the um, future, but still, what do you think about these separated thoughts in the aftermath, you know, when we are going to come, when the bodies are going to come together again or be allowed to come together again? Um, well, I don't know what will be in the future, but uh, I uh, think that uh, uh, this condition, obsessive compulsive disorder, uh, will stay. To, so the mm -hmm. COVID-19 will, will pass, but the OCD uh, will stay with us because uh, as Freud notes in, in the same um, essay, the, uh, the last essay that I quoted uh, about the prohibition of taboo on touch, uh, he said that uh, actually obsessive compulsive disorder is the lack of love. Um, it's just uh, like, uh, like uh, depression, for example. It has the same, uh, and um, uh, sometimes uh, it goes hand by hand with depression, this disorder. Uh, you have depressive episodes, but you also uh, try to uh, avoid any kind of infection. Uh, like uh, really very often uh, this happens. Uh, and, uh, mm, and you don't know why. You think it's just, you are just, uh, yeah, you think it's just normal because you can really protect yourself of all kinds of mic microbes. Uh, and, uh, but they are still everywhere. That's terrible. Everything which is outside, the other in all senses of the world is danger. Uh, and uh, you do what you do in depression, you, you isolate yourself. You do not leave the room, literally you stay in your room. Um, in uh, obsessive compulsive disorder, you, you also like you do rituals. It's uh, like, it's, another, it's slightly other disease, but, but still uh, you, you do like weird rituals uh, and uh, you um, disinfect what you can disinfect. Mental phenomena, physical phenomena, um, you, uh, uh, must separate things. Um, there should be, they should be all, uh, they do not have to be uh, confused, confused, amalgamated. Uh, and, um, mm, uh, and it's a lack of la uh, love, which actually I uh, would, uh, relate to uh, the philosophically speaking to such a uh, thing that Marx called, uh, called alienation, alienation. Uh, in his uh, philosophical, uh, economical philosophical manuscripts of 1844, uh, Marx introduces this concept. It's a Hegelian concept, uh, but uh, Marx Mm, uh, gives it a very uh, an, uh, anthropological uh, meaning. Uh, alienation is, uh, first of all, it's alienated labor. Every day I must do this fucking work. I must uh, work. I would love to, to sit here and write uh, a poem. Uh, I, I just want to, to, I don't know, to sing, to dance, to uh, laugh, but I have to write my um, application and uh, project uh, submission and uh, report, uh, academic report, uh, and so on and so on. Uh, this is a, like a nice case. Right? I also have to, uh, to build houses, whatever. Uh, and uh, doing something 
exclusively because I'm paid for that because I want to, I need to survive. So what I actually sell, I sell uh, my very freedom, uh, my capacity of, uh, um, of uh, free um, expressing uh, myself. And, uh, and this is the work where Marx talks about love. Uh, there is a very important fragment there where he says, can we buy love? No, uh, no, because uh, it's not only uh, labor that is being alienated uh, under capital and the product of labor. Uh, so what I produce do not belong to me. Uh, I, well, there is this copyright. I, uh, I wrote this book, but even I cannot even commission its translation because a company, uh, because the publishing house wants to have money from the other publishing house. Uh, so it's not my, uh, it's, it's their thing already. They, they make money on, on um, uh, 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 the product of my work. So I, I produced uh, a table, I brought it to the market and then uh, this, this table is, uh, doesn't belong to me anymore, but I, get some re but I get some money in return, some debt labor. That's how Marx called money, debt, debt labor. Uh, this is labor, and, and but it, it's also alienation uh, of uh, between people uh, because uh, in this uh, system of social relations, uh, human beings, um, as they bring their uh, their freedom, their very freedom into the market, they consider themselves and others as commodities uh, and productive forces. Uh, and uh, in this sense, they are alienated from each other. There can be no, basically, uh, no way for love. Love is just somehow in spite of that. Love happens, but, uh, but it's, a, it's, it's a really a strange miracle. Um, and uh, 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 and um, uh, the other case is uh, Kafka. Mm, he has this story called Metamorphosis. It is about depression, uh, I think. Uh, it, no, it's not about depression, it, it is uh, another disease. Actually, it is uh, mm, what is now called, um, uh, what was called uh, psychasthenia, uh, the weakness of the soul. Uh, when, when the person is waking up, in the body of an insect, uh, and uh, and uh, that's the way to to stay at home, because otherwise he's a uh, he's a sales uh, sales manager, so to say. He must go uh, to work every morning, and that's the only escape uh, to uh, to uh, just to um, to transform into an insect mimicry of psychasthenia uh, because he kind of uh, is working too much. Uh, so I think that um, uh, all these things, uh, that they have a direct connection actually. Uh, and the, uh, and the obsessive, uh, obsessive compulsive disorder as the lack of love uh, is, uh, uh, is the reason why uh, we cannot simply get rid of it when we get rid of the microbes. No, microbes are not the, the, uh, the cause of the, the microbes. Microbes are the symptoms. COVID-19 is the symptom of a mental uh, illness of our society, which is the lack of capitalism, uh, capitalist alienation as the lack of uh, love. Uh, how can we then, uh, the next question, I, I ask myself, okay, what should we do? Or I don't know now what should we do, but uh, what can really save us not in the way uh, as reds do, like involuntaries, sa saving us with their lives? Yeah, we, they do not sacrifice themselves voluntarily, right? To save it. Uh, the red said, uh, okay, let's save uh, human beings. Let's provide them, them uh, with our lives for 
elaborate in the vaccine, but uh, they are uh, they are alienated from their own. Uh, so the alienation of animal of animals is a terrible thing because from their own way of being of existence in the world, they are uh, alienated and taken and used as a commodity um, and the productive force. Uh, but I think that animals, animality, uh, uh, can really be uh, those uh, who uh, who can save us in, in some proper sense, because uh, they uh, just look at Maya, uh, at Maya's uh, communication with dog. For me, it is always uh, a perfect example. Maya and the dog, or uh, another friend of mine uh, from Russia, Nina Gastiva, a choreographer uh, who is working uh, with, some, sometimes with the dog, they do uh, performances. Um, and, uh, uh, and first of all, uh, animals are like great collaborators and uh, great uh, creative workers, uh, which are super advanced in the forms of labor uh, that is not alienated. What is, what is a non-alienated labor? It is uh, singing, dancing, and uh, play. It's play, yes. Play, gaming, uh, yes. So animals, they do, yeah, hi. <laughs> uh, so they do collaborate, but in a creative way, and they do it absolutely like spontaneous, not for money, just simply like that, what the cat does. Cats are super aesthetes, uh, aesthetes. They create forms. Uh, and they work uh, just, uh, I'm a cat person, I, I observe, of course. Uh, and uh, Giordano Bruno in uh, like uh, uh, many years, many centuries ago was saying, if you want to be uh, really, to know the, the secrets of the world, you have to observe animals. Uh, what, that's what all the magicians do. We need some magic, we need some, uh, communication to other uh, species, non-violent forms of, we, we must learn non-power um, forms of, uh, non-violent forms of communication. It's a simple thing, but uh, like a stupid thing, but, uh, but uh, actually uh, it's crucial. Mm -hmm. It's the main thing I, uh, uh, in my um, perspective um, in order to, uh, to really heal uh, the, uh, the mental diseases of, of our uh, world. <laughs>